Hey everybody, Mr. Hayes back here at Hayes' World of Math. We're talking through AP Statistics, going through the Stats Medic curriculum. All the notes that we have are down below, as well as links to them, whatever you could possibly find. Make sure while you're down there, hit like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. So anyway, here we go. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is setting up tests and how to go about that and how to prove whether or not something actually is true. And the example that we're going to use here is um, that there's a local engineering firm who we need to conduct a, needed to conduct a series of layoffs. Recently, um, they will lay off 10 people. And so they decide, since there's 180 employees there, we're going to, and everybody's qualified the same. Yes, I know it's not like, we we'll just, just go with it, okay? Um, so we're going to use a lottery system carried out by the manager to decide who gets laid off. The manager posts the list of employees to be laid off. Five of the employees are women and five of the employees are men. One of the women claims that this is gender discrimination and starts a lawsuit against the company. So first of all, the manager comes back and says, how could there be gender discrimination when half the employees laid off were female and half the employees were male? What additional information would you need to know to make this work? Take a second, think about it. Hopefully you came up that you needed to know how many females there were in the company, how many males there were in the company, because obviously 50-50 is going to be different. If there's only like five women in the company, it's going to, yeah, it's going to matter. If there was half the people were women, that would also be something different. And so that's what you would end up needing to know. We need to know how many females or males are working at the company, okay? We go through and we tell you this. <clears throat> there are 60 females and 120 males. So basically, it's one third of the workforce is female, the other two thirds is male. How does that change your view? How do we prove that? Is this unlikely? Could this happen? That's what we're going to be talking about today. So first of all, now we have to talk about is how can we investigate the gender discrimination claim? So think about what we did yesterday and how we came up with a simulation. Since we know what the proportions are for female and males, we could go through and simulate if we picked 10 people out of the 180, what, could, what proportions would we get? So there's a number of different ways you could do it, okay? You could put all 180 names in the hat, mix them up, pull them out. Perfectly valid way to do it. Okay, and a good way to actually, as we talked about doing random things, that works very, very well. We could use dice because since it's one third, two thirds, one or two would be female, three through six would be male. And again, you could set that up however it is, just so long that you have one third of your options are female and two thirds of your option would be representing males. You could also do the good old fashioned random number generator. So you could say one through 60 are female. If I got 61 through 180, that'd be male. And you could also just do a spinner like we did yesterday. One third of the results would be female. If they got everything else would be male. Now, if the lottery was fair, what would we see? We should see a p-value equal to one third, right? And that's gonna be our Null hypothesis. Our alternate hypothesis, our alternative hypothesis, would be that it's unfair, and we'll see p being bigger than one third. So, however you want to do this, and I usually my students usually end up saying, "Let's use a calculator or dice." They like dice too. Um, they're going to do one reputation of, of simulation proportions in the female sample. So let's say we went through, and since we're only doing 10, all of our numbers should be nice and round, so we shouldn't have a problem with this. So let's say, for example, I've got a 40%. Now, I ended up doing this just because I only had like 20-some kids in class that day. I had them do it twice because it wasn't that hard. So we ended up coming up with um, 45 different samples. So you can kind of see the dot plot there. You can also see where I <laughs> failed to plan properly. My apologies for that. Um, and so then we ended up with what percentage of the represent half or more of the females being left, left, left off. So that's going to be everything over there. This is this firm's results. 
So we always want to take a look at what we're testing or what we what the results that we're trying to say, is it unfair or not, and go more extreme. Why more extreme? Because we can say, well, it happened to 50%, but look, I mean, I had two, two samples from my class that got 60%. So again, that would be even more extreme than the 50% that they saw. So we always want to go the firm's result, or we always want to go what we're looking for and more extreme. This over here is your p-value. That's the proportion that we got. So now in terms of interpreting this, that's going to be the next question. How do we interpret what's going on here? The way that we do that in statistics is the following. Okay, first of all, we're going to say, because again, up here, remember we said the lottery was fair. So that means that one third of the um, percentage of people being chosen were going to be women. So we assume that the lottery was fair. We set up a simulation so that one third of the choices that we were picking from were indeed female in this case. Okay. So what we did down here was under the assumption that we had a fair lottery. So we're going to say this. Assuming that the lottery was fair, since we got 8 out of 45, that's a little bit under 18%, there was a 17.8% chance of getting a sample proportion of female of 5 or 50% or greater. Actually, I just realized it kind of mixed. Now, it's not mixed metaphors, but you know what I said. Let's do that. I have 0 0.50 here and, and 17.8% up there. That's just not right. I'm sorry. One of these days you'll find a real YouTuber who can teach you math. Um, so assuming that the lottery is fair, there is a 0.178 <clears throat> uh, proportion of getting sample proportion of females of, uh, blah, 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 of 0 0.50 or greater purely by chance. All right. We set it up so it was fair. We did it purely by chance. And we saw that according to our results here, 48 out of 45 or 0.178 was our proportion of getting 50% or more females being laid off. Okay, now for the conclusion, the question here is going to be this. Do we have convincing evidence that there's gender discri discrimination? No, because 18% is more than 5%. 5% is just an arbitrary number, but we've talked about that before. 5% is kind of your go-to. We do not have convincing evidence of gender discrimination. Does it happen a lot that we get 50% or more women being laid off in this situation if the lottery was fair? No, but it still happens 18 out of 100 times. So that's not exactly rare. Okay. This right here is called an alpha value. And this over here is our p value. So we've got our p value is bigger than our alpha value. An alpha will either be given to you or you can kind of assume that 5% will work um, as your threshold. <clears throat> okay. This right here, what was that? That means that things are unfair. That's the gender discrimination, okay? So this right here is my alternative hypothesis. So we do not have convincing evidence that gender discrimination happened. So what ends up happening here? Let's take a look again. So our p-value was bigger than alpha, okay? So it is not convincing evidence. For our alternative hypothesis. And we fail to reject. So let's go like this. One, two. Fail to reject the null hypothesis. Notice we're not saying that we proved the null hypothesis. We didn't prove that this lottery was fair that what this company did. Okay. What we just said was we can't prove that they did it unfairly. Okay, it's kind of that innocent until proven guilty. Okay, well, or actually it's kind of the difference between being innocent and being not guilty. All right, we just don't have proof that it happened. So um, that is going to be the setup. We'll formalize this here in a second, but this right here, this wording down here when we talk about rejecting or accepting the alternate, alternate hypothesis, okay, is going to be a very, very key issue in terms of how we do testing from here in the rest of the class. Okay, so please make sure that you pay a special note to that. Um, we'll see you over on the formalization side. Again, if you have any questions, drop them below, drop them down below in a comment.
Talk to you soon.